Thank you for joining us with this OncLive Peer Exchange program on adult idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. I'm Dr. Ivy Altamari, an Associate Professor of Medicine at Duke University Medical Center. And joining me for this discussion is Dr. Terry Gernsheimer, Professor of Medicine within the Division of Hematology at the University of Washington School of Medicine and Director of Medical Transfusion Service and Medical Director of Transfusion Services at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center. And Dr. Keith McRae, Director of Benign Hematology at the Taussig Cancer Institute and Professor of Molecular Medicine at Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine. Immune thrombocytopenia, or ITP, is a frequently encountered in clinical practice. In this OncLive peer exchange panel discussion, we will be discussing the nuances of diagnosing and managing adult ITP, when to initiate therapy, and how to manage refractory disease. We'll provide practical perspective on current treatment options, as well as looking at future developments in the field. Thank you for joining us. Let's begin. So let's start by talking about the pathophysiology of ITP. Dr. Gersheimer. So um, for many, many years, we thought that the whole problem with ITP was that antibodies were produced for an unknown reason against um, a person's own platelets, and that it was completely a destructive process, that these antibodies cause platelet destruction and opsonization by monocytes, in, particularly macrophages in the spleen. Um, but more recently, I'd say in the last probably 10 to 20 years, what we've realized is that there not only is a shortened platelet survival, but there's also a decrease in platelet production. Um, some of that is due to abnormal apoptosis in the bone marrow by, by megakaryocytes, probably by the effect of antibodies as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, some of it is because we don't see an increase in TPO levels, which the reason for that is not completely clear. In TPO, you mean? Well, sorry, by thrombopotent. Yeah. Um, and then we're also realizing that T cells play some role in ITP. They may mm -hmm. be directly cytotoxic to platelets. They may also be directly cytotoxic to megakaryocytes. So this is a lot more complicated than we originally thought. And I would imagine that it's not one mechanism in one patient. And you have patients that are more dependent on uh, lack of Tregs. You have other patients that have a higher antibody burden. And do we have any way to determine that? At this point, we really don't. Um, antibody measurements um, against platelets and ITP are really not what we wished they would be. Um, they're certainly not at the level of a Coombs test, where you could make the diagnosis of autoimmune hemolytic anemia by looking at a Coombs test. The, the um, significance of antiplatelet antibody and also the positivity um, is not always yeah, there. Right. And so we really have to be thinking that, there, that we have to look at this in other ways to determine whether or not we've got an issue. We'll be talking about the management of adult ITP, but we know that it occurs in children as well. Um, and fortunately, the pediatric version, I believe, is more self-limited. Um, but Dr. McRae, what, um, what are the d key differences between adult and pediatric ITP? So uh, the, the major difference is the, uh, the self-limited nature mostly of, of pediatric ITP. About 75% of children who develop ITP will achieve a complete remission within the next six to nine months. Thank goodness. Uh, likely often even without any therapy. Um, and uh, so exactly why that is, is is not clear. I mean, in ITP in children is, is more commonly clearly associated with a preceding viral infection as opposed to adults. I think the interesting thing is we use the term children and adults, but when does a child become an adult in terms of ITP? And it's not age 18. It's probably somewhere, you know, somewhere in around age 12 to 13, somewhere maybe even a little bit younger. So, uh, so when we talk about classical childhood ITP, we think more of probably children seven years or less. 